Hello everyone. This video is about extraocular muscles and its movements. It's a very interesting topic but still a little complicated because we have to put some extra efforts to understand about its movements. But once a concept is made, it is made much easier. I have given you a set of MCQs at the end of this video. Please go through this uh, video fully to find out the answers for these MCQs because those are the heads where we have to concentrate more. So let's get into the video. Under the following topics, we are going to learn about the extraocular muscles or the EOM. The classification of the muscles and about an important structure called as annulus of zinc is to be known. The origin and insertion of the muscles, the nerve supply, the blood supply of the muscles and the most important is the movements of the muscles and its applied anatomy. EOM is classified into two categories namely voluntary muscles and involuntary muscles. There are total 10 extraocular muscles present in the eyeball. Among the 10 muscles, 7 muscles are voluntary muscles and 3 are involuntary muscles. These voluntary muscles are skeletal in nature and there are about 4 recti muscles namely superior recti, inferior recti, medial recti and lateral recti. 2 oblique muscles namely superior oblique and inferior oblique and 1 levator palpebrae superioris. The rest 3 involuntary muscles are smooth muscle in type and there are 2 tarsal muscles namely superior tarsal muscle and the inferior tarsal muscle and 1 muscle namely the orbitalis which is inconspicuous and whose function is not known. Annulus of sin. This is a tendinous ring shaped structure which is present in the apex of the orbit this is a structure which is going to give rise to the four recti muscles. It is oval in cross section and encircles the optic foramen which transmits the optic nerve and the medial part of the superior orbital fissure in the apex of the orbit. Origin and insertion of the four recti muscles. As I have already told you, the four recti muscles arises from the annulus of zinc. These muscles namely the medial rectus, inferior rectus, lateral rectus and the superior rectus originates from the corresponding sides of the ring and after which they follow the corresponding walls of the orbit. The medial and the lateral recti follow the medial wall and the lateral wall. The inferior rectus remains contact with the orbital floor while the superior rectus alone is separated from the orbital roof by a muscle named as levator palpebrae superioris. All these muscles finally gets inserted into the sclera but at different distances from the limbus. What is limbus? Limbus is the junction between the sclera and the cornea that is the sclerocorneal junction. The medial rectus is inserted at a distance of about 5.5 mm from the limbus. The inferior rectus about 6.5 mm, lateral rectus 6.9 mm and the superior rectus about 7.7 .7 mm from the limbus in the respective sites. The insertion of the four recti muscles around the limbus is in the form of a spiral and this is called as the spiral of Tillux. Both the superior oblique and the inferior oblique unlike the recti muscles originates from the bony part of the orbit. The superior oblique muscle arises from the body of the sphenoid medial to the optic foramen. After its origin, the muscle passes forwards at the junction between the roof and the medial wall of the orbit and reaches the trochlea of the superior orbital margin. This trochlea is a thick fibrous cartilaginous pulley which is attached to the trochlear notch a projection present in the superior or the supraorbital margin of the orbit. From the trochlea, the muscle diverts its direction and passes backwards laterally and downwards below the superior rectus muscle and gets inserted into the sclera behind the equator in the posterior superior quadrant of the eyeball. The inferior oblique muscle originates as a rounded tendon from the orbital plate of the maxilla. This is the only muscle which originates from the front of the orbit while the other muscle takes origin from the posterior part of the orbit. The muscle at its origin is present below the inferior rectus muscle and then turns direction as upward, backward and laterally under cover the lateral rectus it gets inserted into the sclera behind the equator in the posterior superior quadrant of the eyeball. 
At its insertion, it is close to the superior oblique muscle. Levator palpebrae superioris. It is a triangular sheet of muscle which is present between the roof of the orbit and the superior rectus muscle. This muscle originates from the undersurface of the lesser wing of the sphenoid as a narrow tendon. But as it passes forward, it becomes broad and fleshy, having a straight medial margin and a lateral margin. The medial margin gets attached to the medial palpebral ligament, while the lateral margin is attached to the Whitmell's tubercle, which is a projection present in the lateral margin of the orbit. The broad anterior part splits into three lamella, namely upper lamella, intermediate lamella and the lower lamella. The upper lamella is inserted into the skin of the upper eyelid. This intermediate lamella is the one which is getting modified into an involuntary smooth muscle called as superior tarsal muscle. The lower lamella is inserted into the superior fornix of the conjunctiva. All this time we were talking about the origin and insertion of the voluntary skeletal muscles. Coming to the involuntary smooth muscles namely the superior tarsal, inferior tarsal and orbitalis muscle. As already told you the superior tarsal muscle is a modification of the intermediate lamella of the levator palpebrae superioris muscle which is attached to the upper margin of the superior tarsal plate. The inferior tarsal muscle is attached to the inferior tarsal plate of the lower eyelid into the facial sheath. The orbitalis muscle is said to be stretched along the inferior orbital fissure. Not much is known about this muscle. Nerve supply of the extraocular muscles. To remember the nerve supply of the EOM, a common mnemonic namely LR6SO4, the whole bracketed 3 is being used. LR means lateral rectus which is supplied by the 6th cranial nerve namely the obducens nerve. SO means superior oblique which is supplied by the 4th cranial nerve that is the trochlear nerve. The rest of the voluntary skeletal muscles are supplied by the 3rd cranial nerve that is the oculomotor nerve. Thus the mnemonic LR6SO4 the whole bracketed 3 is helpful to remember the nerve supply of the voluntary skeletal muscles. The involuntary smooth muscle is supplied by the postganglionic sympathetic fibers arising from the superior cervical ganglion. Hence, the involuntary muscles are supplied by the sympathetic nerves. Blood supply of the extraocular muscles. The artery which is supplying the extraocular muscles is the ophthalmic artery and its branches and the venous drainage is by the superior and the inferior ophthalmic vein. Coming to the most important part of the discussion that is the movements of the eyeball. To make it easier we will study the movements in the following headings. The axis of movements, the action of the individual muscles, the monoocular eye movements or the ductions, the binocular eye movements namely the versions and vergences. Axis of movements. There are three axes of movements of the eyeball one passing along the transverse axis or the x-axis which produces elevation movement of the eyeball and depression of the eyeball. The second passing along the vertical axis or the y-axis causing adduction movement and the abduction movement. The third is passing along the anterior posterior axis that is extending from the anterior pole to the posterior pole of the eye producing the torsion movement of the eyeball. There are two torsion movements namely intorsion and extorsion. When the 12 o'clock position of the cornea rotates medially it is called as intorsion and when rotated laterally it is called as extorsion. Hence the movements produced along the three axes by the eyeball are Elevation, depression, adduction, abduction, intorsion and extorsion. Now let's see the actions produced by each of these extraocular muscles. We are going to learn about the action of the individual muscles that is the four recti and the two oblique muscles in three positions. One in primary position, second in adducted eye and third in the abducted eye. First, let's learn about their actions in the primary position of gaze. In case of medial rectus, it causes only adduction 
and in lateral rectus only abduction movements occur in the primary position of gaze while the other four muscles namely superior and inferior rectus superior and inferior oblique produces three types of actions in the primary position of gaze which are primary action secondary action and tertiary action the primary action of superior rectus is elevation inferior rectus is depression superior oblique is intorsion and inferior oblique is extorsion to remember the secondary and the tertiary actions of these four muscles there is a mnemonic named as sinrad which denotes s i n sin means all superiors or intorters rad r a d means all rectus or adductors using this mnemonic let's derive the action of these four muscles in the primary position of gaze so the superior rectus has elevation adduction and intorsion inferior rectus has depression adduction and extorsion superior oblique has depression abduction and intorsion while inferior oblique has elevation abduction and extorsion as already told medial rectus has adduction only and lateral rectus has abduction only these movements of the muscles in the primary position of gaze will be helpful only in the monoocular eye movement or the duction movement in case of both eyes moving that is binocular movement of eyes the elevation is produced by superior rectus in abducted eye while the elevation is produced by the inferior oblique in the adducted eye similarly the inferior rectus produces depression in abducted eye and the superior oblique produces depression in the adducted eye this concept we will make use of it while we are discussing about the binocular movement of the eye or the version movement ductions or monoocular eye movements these are the movements produced by the single eye the movements produced are adduction abduction supraduction or the elevation infraduction or the depression in cycloduction or intorsion ex cycloduction or the extorsion earlier we studied about the action produced by the individual muscle now in case of duction movement that is the movement produced by the single eye each movement will be contributed by one or more muscles let's see what is synergist and what is antagonist muscles synergist or muscles of the same eye causing movement of the eye in the same direction superior rectus and inferior oblique of the same eye will cause elevation movement so these two muscles are synergist muscles likewise the inferior rectus and the superior oblique will produce depression action so these two muscles are synergist of the same eye let's enumerate the synergistic muscles of a single eye superior rectus has inferior oblique inferior rectus and superior oblique the action of medial rectus and lateral rectus are not helped by any other muscles so they do not have synergistic muscle now we'll see the muscles responsible for the various duction movements the medial rectus causes adduction the lateral rectus causes abduction elevation is caused by inferior oblique and superior rectus muscle depression is caused by superior oblique and inferior rectus muscle intorsion by the superior oblique and extorsion by the inferior oblique muscle of same eye antagonistic muscles these are any two muscles of the same eye performing opposite action the following are the antagonistic muscles of the same eye medial rectus and lateral rectus superior rectus and inferior rectus superior oblique and inferior oblique next we will see about the binocular movements which are of two types they are versions and vergences versions are known as conjugate movements which are synchronous symmetric movements of both eyes occurring in the same direction there are six cardinal positions of gaze with respect to this version they are dextroversion levo version dextro elevation levo elevation dextro depression and levo depression each of these version movement will be carried out by a pair of muscles one from each eye which contract simultaneously and such two muscles are called as yoke muscles 
to note in version moments the rectile muscles act in abducted position and the oblique muscles act in adducted position let's consider the moment dextroversion dextro means right side so in case of dextroversion both the eyes will be moving towards the right side in the right side the eye will be in the abducted position and in the left eye the eye will go for adducted position so the right eye lateral rectus will be acting which will be synchronized by the left side medial rectus so right lateral rectus and left medial rectus producing this dextroversion moment are called as yoke muscles similarly in case of levoversion both the eyes will be moving towards the left side levo means left side so the left eye will be in the abducted position and the right eye will be in the adducted position in this levo version left lateral rectus will be acting which will be synchronized by the right medial rectus so left lateral rectus and the right medial rectus producing the levo version or yoke muscles now what happens in dextro elevation in dextro elevation both the eyes will be looking up on the right side on the right side the eye will be looking up on the abducted position and on the left side the eye will be looking up on the adducted position so the elevation produced in abducted eye is caused by the superior rectus and the elevation in the adducted eye is caused by the inferior oblique so in dextro elevation right superior rectus and left inferior oblique are acting together to perform this action hence these two muscles are called as yoke muscles one more example is dextro depression where both the eyes are looking down on the right side the depression caused in the abducted position is produced by inferior rectus muscle and the depression caused in the adducted position will be produced by the superior oblique muscle so what happens in case of dextro depression the right side inferior rectus and the left side superior oblique will be acting together to cause this moment and hence these two muscles are the yoke muscles the remaining two gases namely levo elevation and levo depression can easily be solved in this way where in levo elevation the left superior rectus and right inferior oblique or yoke muscles and in levo depression left inferior rectus and right superior oblique are the yoke muscles so in a nutshell the binocular moments are produced by the yoke muscles and the monocular moments produced by the synergistic muscles coming to the another type of binocular moment called as vergences there are two type of vergences one is convergence the other one is the divergence in convergence there will be inward rotation of both eyes which results from the co contraction of the two medial rectus muscles in case of divergence there will be co contraction of the two lateral rectus muscle resulting in the outward rotation of both the eyes convergence is a voluntary action produced when seeing a near object and divergence is an involuntary action produced during head tilt or when viewing a rotating visual image to conclude let us also know about the actions of the levator palpebrae superioris and the smooth muscles levator palpebrae superioris acts on the upper eyelid for its elevation similarly the superior tarsal muscle which is also called as muller's muscle innervated by the sympathetic fibers elevates the upper eyelid The inferior tarsal muscle attached to the lower eyelid helps in the retracting the lower eyelid while the function of the orbitalis is not known. Coming to the last part of the discussion the clinical anatomy. The squint or otherwise called as strabismus are of four types. They are esotrophia which means inward deviation of the eye, exotrophia which is outward deviation of eye. hypertrophia is upward deviation and hypotrophia is downward deviation of the eye this occurs because of the paralysis of the extraocular muscles the third nerve or the oculomotor nerve supplies all the voluntary extraocular muscles except the superior oblique and the lateral rectus muscle the nerve might be affected either due to congenital causes or due to acquired causes like head injury brain tumor aneurysm diabetes or due to high blood pressure the following are the signs of the third nerve palsy 
first is ptosis which means drooping of the upper eyelid which is caused by the paralysis of the levator palpebrae superioris supplied by the oculomotor nerve the abduction and the intorsion of the eyeball occurs because of the unopposed action of the lateral rectus muscle and the superior oblique muscle adduction movement is affected because of the paralysis of the medial rectus muscle there is limitation to depress the eyeball because of the paralysis of the inferior rectus muscle and due to the unopposed action of superior oblique there will be intorsion of the globe since superior rectus is affected there will be limitation of elevation also oculomotor nerve is also responsible for the pupillary reflex and accommodation reflex which will be affected hence there is dilated pupil and defective accommodation reflex due to third nerve palsy fourth nerve or the trochlear nerve supplies the superior oblique muscle which is responsible for the intorsion and the depression of the eyeball when this nerve is affected there will be restricted ocular movements and the eye will go for hypertrophia because of the unopposed action of the inferior oblique on down gaze the patient will manifest with diplopia so to correct diplopia the patient will acquire an abnormal head posture and tilt his head so these are the features of the fourth nerve palsy sixth nerve is otherwise called as the abducens nerve which supplies the lateral rectus muscle when this muscle is affected the patient will not be able to abduct the eye so his eye will go for squint called as esotrophia that is inward deviation of the eye on horizontal binocular movement of the eye the patient will acquire diplopia and to correct diplopia the patient tries to turn the head towards the affected side Honor syndrome or otherwise called as oculosympathetic paresis is caused by the paralysis of the sympathetic fibers in this honor syndrome the following features are present sympathetic nerve fiber injury causes anhydrosis meiosis ptosis loss of ciliospinal reflexes and the inophthalmos the muller's muscle or the superior tarsal muscle is supplied by the sympathetic fibers gets affected in honor syndrome and hence the patient manifests with the ptosis that is drooping of the upper eyelid which is the action of the superior tarsal muscle these are some of the most important clinical anatomy with respect to the extraocular muscles go through the mcqs which is frequently asked in the exams and try to find out the answers for that thank you